We want to welcome you to the service of thanksgiving and celebration for the life of Dr. Amber Bianca Martinez. I, along with my family, along with the East End Seventh-day Adventist Church, and on behalf of the Cayman Islands Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, our president, Pastor Ronaldo Drackett, who unfortunately is also away for another funeral service in the Bahamas for a former president right here in the Cayman Islands Conference. On behalf of our executive secretary, Pastor Andrew Campbell, and our chief financial officer, Elder John Wesley, and all of our pastors and members of the Seventh-day Adventist Church here in the Cayman Islands, we want to express our deepest and sincerest condolences to the entire family, to the Martinez family, and all of the others, relatives, and friends, and persons that are here on this tragic loss of our young Dr. Amber Martinez. Brother Barry and Sister Josie, Sebastian and China, and all of the grandparents and relatives and friends and all, the, all those who are here to give support. We want to let you know that we want to continue to lift each and every one of you up in prayer. We also recognize in our congregation this morning uh, our government officials, our deputy governor of the Cayman Islands, Honorable Franz Manderson, Honorable Dr. Makiba Bush, our MPs that are here. We want to recognize you and appreciate your support. We want to recognize all of the HSA staff, Dr. Samuel Williams Rodriguez and all of the persons connected at HSA in the public health department. All of the nurses, Dr. Kiran Kumar Allah, uh, Martina Jackson from the United World College of the Cayman Islands, and all of the host of persons, young persons, and persons that are here today. We express our sincere sympathies to each and every one of you, and pray that this service will bring comfort, will bring strength, even amidst all of the questions and the doubts that we may have in this life. We may never have the answers for our questions, but we have to live with hope. Hope in Jesus. Hope beyond the uncertainty, uncertainties of life, because there is still hope in Christ Jesus. There's only one thing certain in this life, in this life of sin, sooner or later, and that is death. Death is the worst and most painful experiences that we here as human beings will ever experience. And we know it is as a result of sin entering into this world. The Bible says in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, the wages or the payment of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And that is the hope that we hold on to. That is the hope that we will bring forward to you, each and every one of you, but especially for the family. We pray that God will strengthen us and we will recognize the brevity of life. The Bible also says in the book of James that life is like a vapor. It is here one minute and it's gone the next. That's why we have to live our every day like it is our last. And we have to live to bless and serve others just as Dr. Amber did. And we will hear in the testimonies and the tributes today the dash that she made in her life. And as we live with that hope in Christ, we know that death doesn't have to have the final say for us because of what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. Because with Jesus, we know the best is still yet to come. I pray that God will bless each and every one of us, that we will find comfort in the Holy Spirit, and the God of all comforts will be right here to embrace the family members and all of us here. 
the program will go unannounced. We will follow in our programs and um, we'll ask you to just follow along as we continue to breathe words of prayer and lift up the family in a very special way. May God bless us as we celebrate and thank God for the life of Dr. Amber Martinez. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, so painful. For the former things would have been passed away. What a promise. We will see Amber again. That's the blessed hope and the assurance of the word of God. Father, bless your people this morning. They have come from all over this island. to give thanks to you for the life lived by a young girl dedicated to you as a child. We pray that this service will bring strength, will bring comfort, will bring peace. Bless the family. Bless the close family. Bless the parents. Give them comfort this morning. May they feel the presence of God. May the presence of God be felt right through this church and in the tent. All those in this island watching online, we pray that you will bless your people today, we pray. In Jesus' precious name.
You talk of faith when you're up on the mountain. Oh, but the talk comes so easy when life at its best. Well, it's down in the valley. is taken from Psalms 34, verses 17 and 18. And it reads, The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears, and delivers them out of their troubles. Amen. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart, and saves such as have a contrite spirit. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Good morning, everyone. To Cousin Josie and Mr. Barry, Sister Babs, Brother Francis, and in the entire family, I wish to convey my condolences on behalf of myself, my mom, Carol, cousins, my grandparents, George and Blanca Allen. Our hearts cry out with yours, and I'm honored to be able to deliver this tribute and song from Amber's parents.
establish, but do allow me to offer condolences to the family on behalf of His Excellency the Governor, our Premier, all members of our, our Cabinet, all the MPs, and um, acting speakers here. Mr. Bush is here, Parliamentary Secretary is ranking in Seymour. On behalf of all of us in the civil service, members from the CUC, from Water Authority, we offer our condolences to the family. Members of the HSA here are also. Of course, my, my family, my mother and my wife and daughter Alyssa Franz Jr. is off island at work and my sister Paula, who had a very special bond. Barry and I grew up. It must be. My, um, We had a great bond together, played football together, did everything together. His cousin Adrian and I were best friends, so he became my best friend. He and his brothers and sisters, we all had great times together in West Bay. I watched Barry grow up to be an outstanding citizen, an outstanding young man. He married a wonderful lady in jo Joanna. He raised his children, and his children and I, my children got to know each other, spent time together. My daughter reminds me that the only house that she could go to sleep over was Uncle, uh, Uncle Barry's, because I know Barry would take care of my daughter like his and he knew I would do the same. Barry and Joanna. No parent should have to do what they're doing today. But I want you to be proud because you have raised outstanding children. Three wonderful children. You have done exactly what all of us should do is raise productive citizens and give our children an opportunity to realize their dreams. Barry and Joanna did that in an exceptional way. They sacrificed, they worked hard, they prayed, and their children have become outstanding citizens and have achieved so much. We are proud of Amber and China and Sebastian. They are outstanding people, young people. So Barry and Joanna, please just take a little bit of time and be comforted by the fact that you have done an outstanding job as parents. You made us all very proud. I've seen a lot in my time. I going to look for Barry and Joanna. I seen things that I had not seen in a long time. I seen a strong family, Martinez and Welcome family. They're special people. You go to their home and in this intense time of sorrow, they're looking out for you. What can we get you? Do you need something? You know, they are in pain, but they are looking out for their fellow beings. Special family, special, special family. I, I, don't, I don't think I could do that. We have learned a lot. It has brought us back to what it's meant to be a Kimanyan, isn't it? To look after each other, to be there for one another, to share, to take food, to take drink, to, to, to be with our fellow Caymanians in time of 
intense grief. I've seen that. And Joanna, you know, always say we want something good to happen, come from the passing of our dear Amber. For me, it is another lesson. Let us not wait for grief and tragedy to spend time with those you care about. Let us do it now. I'm going to remember that about Amber. To give people the love and support they need now, not later on. The family has asked me to thank all of you for the love and outpouring of support that they have received over the past few weeks. It has been outstanding, and they would never have gotten through it without your love and support. And China said that yesterday. Again, she is worried that no one was going to thank you for being there for them. That just says a lot about the family and what they're all about. Mr. and Mrs. Welcome, you've done an outstanding job. Barry parents have done an outstanding job raising some exceptional commandments. Thank you. Where do we begin? Tears flow more freely than words. We are so blessed to have had three beautiful and amazing children, Amber China and Ramon Sebastian. Amber, as the eldest, always strives to be a role model for her younger siblings and all the others who she came in contact with. Amber wanted to change the world so that it became a better place. She wanted to make a difference by her example, fix the injustices, help those in need, and most of all, help heal and cure the sick. Amber was smart, kind-hearted, passionate about life, and had a work ethic like none other. Amber was proud to hail from the Cayman Islands, and besides spreading our Caymanian kind everywhere she went, she made sure to share her food, culture, and stories of the beauty of our islands. Why? Why? our precious amber. We have questioned. Our hearts are breaking with the pain. Sometimes life just doesn't seem to be fair. It seems that for some of us that are weak in faith, life throws such difficulties to test our faith. We know that God must have his reasons for why he allowed amber to be taken so soon but it's very hard to accept this reality. To not see, hear, or touch her is just so hard to accept. Losing Amber is definitely the hardest thing we've had to deal with as a family since losing Mama Clover last year. Not a day goes by without us experiencing immense pain and sadness we know that Amber would not want us to stay in such a dark and painful place. Instead, she would want us to try to find the positives in this difficult situation and live life with passion and purpose that she did. In an effort to move forward, we have decided to use today's service as a celebration and thanksgiving of Amber's life, to not only acknowledge all the good that she has done and the great memories she has left with us, but also to encourage others to be more selfless and strive for the betterment of humanity as she did. We thank God for affording us the privilege to be Amber's parents and using her in the ways that he did. Amber is a testament that God uses good people to do great things. And in the short 29 years and six months that God loaned her to us, his grace, she left 
with this grace, she has left an amazing legacy. Amazing. As a member of the United World College, UWC, Pearson PC 367 group, Amber truly lived up to the name of change maker, as the young, as the year group called themselves. Being a good mix of both parents, Amber got her tenacity and drive from her mom and her kindness and personable personality from her dad. Strangely enough, neither parent could agree from whom Amber got her brains and good looks. We'll say both. Amber was always quick to form bonds and connections with anyone she met, and it seemed that she had a sixth sense in identifying someone in need and was always willing to help. These traits allowed her to easily fit in with the UWC ethos to always help no matter how big or small. To always use her education for the betterment of humanity, regardless of career choice. And that she could inspire change through courageous action. One example of Amber's amazing gift to identify others in need or help was on an evening a few years back when we were driving home from work. We crossed a young girl sitting by the edge of the road. After we drove across, Amber indicated that the child needed help. Our response was it did not look like anything was wrong with the child. Amber then stated the child had mouth, please help me, as we were driving by. We found it hard to believe that Amber had seen this, but at her assistance and some of her mom's tenacity, we turned around the vehicle and headed back to the child to inquire if everything was okay. The nine-year-old girl indicated that she was not okay and proceeded to tell us that she had come home on the school bus only to find that she had left her house keys at school. To make matters worse, Worse, her single mom was working late that night and would not be home until about 9 p.m. And it was just about 6 p.m. We took the child back to our school to try to find the lost keys. Luckily, the cleaners were at the school and the keys were found in the child's desk. We drove the child back to her home and got her settled at home, making sure she had food, etc. as the child refused to stay with us until the mom, mother got home. We made the child call her mother on the phone to confirm that she was in the house and waiting for her to return from work. We left our cell numbers with the child to call us in the event there was an emergency before her mother arrived home. There are many more similar stories. We mentioned how easily Amber formed bonds with others. As a result, Amber was fortunate to have had several amazing adult role models, friends in her life, besides her parents. Amber had a very special bond with cousin Vince Welcome, who always stayed at her home whenever he visited Cayman. After Hurricane Ivan, Vince and his wife took Amber, China, and Seb to live with them for several weeks. This, of course, was no small task. Imagine three children, aged 5 to 11, for newlyweds who had not yet had children of their own. Vince always had a routine of checking up on Amber and would visit Amber and her friends throughout her college years. Additionally, Amber had godfather Robert, godmother and aunt Marlene, and special family friends that were referred to as aunts. At Marcia, at Francia, at DC. Special mention should be made to George, Teddy, and Donna Hydes, Jean and Esme Hydes, and Paula Manderson, who always checked on Amber wherever they were in Miami while she attended the University of Miami. Amber looked forward to these visits as it meant, as it meant she was always in for a special treat whether it was a courtside, early entrance at a heat game, or, or Keynes football game, dinner, sh shopping, or just time to catch up. There's also Nanetta, Nanny, who will be affectionately referred to as Amber's Hungarian mom, and her children, Marcel 
and Lodi, Lodi, Ambrose's Hungarian siblings. Ambrose's time in Hungary would not have been the same without them. Last but not, no means least, all of Ambrose's special friends at public health. We thank you. We thank you for all your guidance and support in helping to shape Amber into the special, very special person that she was that she, and she became. Amber was God-fearing and strived to always do the right thing. She was a stickler for sticking to the rules and policies, even if she thought they should be changed or challenged. As a champion of others, Amra was always willing to take on the status quo. We vividly remember when Amra decided to become a student researcher, in addition to her already demanding medical school course load. She wanted to research on the mental health of medical students, professionals. This was early 2020, and at which time the COVID pandemic was just starting. Her reasoning was there was only a handful of studies she could find in all of Europe. While there, there were many, while there were many references to the United States. If you're a medical professional, you will understand the taboo and stigma the general public can have of having medical students, professionals, and mental health in the same sentence. Of course, the advent of COVID made researching this topic easier as the subject of medical doctors and depression became less of a taboo topic. Medical professionals were no longer considered as superhuman or people without feelings. Amber thought this topic was important for the work of the English German Student Council that she was a part of, as their role was to enhance the student experience of students who came from many different countries. Further to this research, Amber not only placed second in the health sciences tech category of the TD 2021 conference. But she was also able to champion change for mental health, such as an annual event of Tea and Talk, which takes place on World Mental Health Day, and the creation of the Silent Room, which is a space where, student, where university students can practice their religion in privacy. What an outstanding achievement. For Amber's graduation on the 2nd of July, 2022, we asked what she wanted as a gift. She requested a Litzman stethoscope engra engraved with her name and the bell had to be rainbow finish. As parents, we knew she already had a very nice stethoscope with the University of Miami Colors. So we quickly questioned why this gift? Without skipping a beat, Amber responded that in the medical industry, just like how uniform colors play a huge role for patients. So would the color of her stethoscope, by the bell having all of the colors of the rainbow. Everyone loves rainbows, as a rainbow is a promise of good. The rainbow bell would be a welcoming sign that her diverse patients could appreciate and know that their background did not matter as her service was available we know that Amber was registered as an organ donor. However, this too was not God's will. Even in death, her plan was to help others. This was our precious Amber, always thinking of how to make everyone else fit in or be at ease always looking for the good in others, making certain that others were treated fair and equally, and how she could help, as no life was more valuable than the next. We are so proud of all that she has accomplished in her short life, and all that she stood for. We just wished that she had more time to actually begin practicing medicine as that was her goal. We will forever love Amber and cherish the precious memories we created together. Amber will live on in our hearts. 
We hope that from today's service, all who are present will not only hear of how Amber had the goodness of God in her and was used to help others, but it will be also understood that Amber's reason for making her light shine so brightly was truly to help others. This is something every one of us here to do, every one of us here today can also do. Imagine what an amazing world we would live in if each of us here today pledged to do our own small part to help those in need or try to bring about change where, need, where needed to aid our fellow mankind. What a world indeed. Till we meet again, precious child, you will forever live in our hearts, your broken heart parents and grandparents. There are some who bring a light so great to the world that even after they have gone, their light remains. That is our armor. God bless. Good afternoon, friends and family. When I first got the text message from Josie, I figured it would be to sing a song, and I'm glad she didn't ask me to do that because having to pre read this tribute from the siblings in preparation for today, I know that I would not have been able to make it through a song. But it was important for me to be here and support the family in any way that I can. Amber was a special soul, as you all heard and you already know. She loved and cared for everyone that she came in contact with, and especially her parents and her siblings, without a shadow of a doubt. Whenever we all know that parents and our parents and children, I know my son is 18 months old, so I know that I have my arguments with him already. But when that happens, we go through a period where we don't even want to look at each other. We don't want to talk to each other. But Jose, Amber would text me every single time to ask me how you were doing. She cared deeply, deeply for everyone that she came in contact with. And before I read these tributes on behalf of myself, my wife Amy, and all of my family, to you all, I offer my sincerest condolences and love. I love you all, and I thank you for sharing Amber and my life with me. Tribute from siblings, from China and Sebastian. Dear Amber, our big sister and protector, words cannot describe the heartbreak and devastation we feel now that you are no longer with us. We wish we had one more hug from you, one more I love you, one more time to see your beautiful face. You have always been our role model, setting the bar high for our achievements to follow. A guiding example, you always offered sound advice and a shoulder to lean on in trying times. Amber, your life was so short yet so fully lived. The places you traveled, the people you met, the lives you touch near and far. You lived with purpose and passion, influenced change, and never, never wavered from your dreams. You have left your mark on this world, and your impact is evident. Navigating life without you will be so hard. Your smile, laugh, and spontaneous affection we will cherish forever. When we feel lost, we will remember your advice. When we are overcome with sadness, we will think of the happiness we shared. And when we feel joy, we will think of you being there with us. You will forever be in our hearts <coughs> until we meet again. From China and Sebastian. The next tribute is from Darren. To my sis, 
You are so special to me. And I am so thankful for every moment that you spent with us. We are truly blessed to have had you in our lives. I will always remember the good times we have spent together over the years. Your graduation this year was most memorable to me because of your accomplishment of becoming Dr. Martinez. I was so proud and blessed to spend that day with you, which also happened to be my birthday. There are the mem these are the memories I will never forget. I will forever hold them close to my heart. You're indeed one of a kind, such a beautiful soul, and I will always be, and you will always be my sister. Watch over us all because you're an angel now, and we need you to guide us. We love you, Amber, always and forever. Protocol having already been observed. Good morning to all. I am Therese Burrell Prehe. In the absence, in the unavoidable absence of our Chief Executive Officer, Ms. Lizette Yearwood, I have been requested to share the tribute to, to the late Dr. Amber Martinez from her HSA family. I stand before you this morning with a profound sense of mixed emotions as we collectively mourn, but yet celebrate the memorable life of a dear colleague and friend. Dr. Martinez will always be remembered as a respected, hardworking, compassionate young physician who was zealous about her career in medicine because she loved helping others. She was deeply admired for her intelligence, perseverance, compassion, humility, genuine love for people, and kind-heartedness. Dr. Martinez was an extraordinary young lady. Staff who interacted with her at the National Healthcare Conference the day before her untimely passing recall her excitement Having attended for the first time as Dr. Martinez, she was celebrated and congratulated widely by colleagues and friends that entire evening. While we mourn the loss of a very special colleague, we also want to pay tribute today and celebrate a life that was well lived. Dr. Martinez was all about making a difference in the lives of those with whom she encountered, and anyone who has ever met her will never forget her charm, her grace, gentle spirit, and the unique ways in which she made you feel very special. She's remembered for often offering a sweet treat or fruit from her parents' garden and was willing to give even of her last. Dr. Martinez joined the Health Services Authority in June 2011 as a high school intern in the Accident and Emergency Department and then interned with the Public Health Department working on projects of national concern before leaving for the University of Miami where she studied for an undergraduate degree in the sciences, graduating in 2015. Dr. Martinez con continued to gain valuable work experience even throughout her college years as part of our annual summer student internship program with great determination and professionalism. In 2015, she left for medical school in Pex, Hungary, and she continued working whenever she returned home until 2022. She spoke to staff passionately about her next career step, which was to attend a teaching hospital in the United Kingdom in the coming months 
to specialize in acute medicine. Dr. Martinez was the perfect embodiment of our core values here at the Health Services Authority. Respect, responsibility, integrity, caring, and excellence. She was respectful of everyone with whom she came into contact, no matter their background. Her sense of responsibility is unmatched because you only had to provide her with the details of an assigned task and she would make it her own, take full control and deliver with a sense of precision and alacrity every single time. She was uncompromising in her stance to uphold the highest integrity as a medical professional. Another remarkable trait of hers, which seemed to come naturally because of her caring personality and constant pursuit of excellence. With such exceptional qualities, we understand why she chose to be a doctor. The following are a few reflections shared by her colleagues. Dr. Samuel Williams Rodriguez, Medical Officer of Health. Amber was an unusually kind and exceptionally bright person that was prepared to dedicate her life to caring for others. She continued to show immense potential as a doctor when she graduated in 2022. I personally miss her dearly. Dr. Erica Simmons. Dr. Martinez was full of passion and her future was filled with promise. Her loss has left an indelible mark on all of us. Dr. Joy Merrin. Dr. Amber was a brilliant, beautiful, confident person with great leadership ability. One who was competent and had accomplished much, who knew how to work as a team and was loved dearly by all of us at Public Health Admin. We miss her profoundly. Nola. Your eagerness to offer assistance was one of your greatest attributes, which will surely be missed. Therese, that's myself. Her humble, genuine demeanor is a legacy we shall always, always remember. Timothy, she wanted to make a mark on our islands she wanted to serve humanity and make these islands a better place. One person at a time, one community at a time. I thank God for the time he loaned her to us. Our public health family is missing a gem, but we are so much better to have known and loved her. Sarah, Amber's passion will always be remembered. Her quick wit, and take charge personality will dearly be missed. Celicia, Dr. Martinez was brilliant and a diligent young lady with a genuine mind and heart for her Caymanian people. She was witty and a pleasure to work with. Our public health nurses. Amber was a very special person, decent, fun, caring, a consummate professional and a good mix for all of us to aspire to. We regret her passing with genuine sadness and sympathy. To the bereaved family, we wish you courage and strength to bear the irreplaceable loss. Though there are no words which we can adequately express to ease the pain of the grief that you feel, we hope that in the midst of your sorrow, you can take comfort in knowing Amber left this world a better place by how she impacted us and those with whom she came into contact. This reflects the values you have instilled in her. We are deeply grateful for the years she spent with us, for meeting and for knowing her. Our lives will be inspired by the lessons of her life, which she has taught us through her genuine love 
and care for people. Strength of character, humility, passion, courage, and strength. Despite the emotional loss that we feel, we are left with the many memories of a wonderful human being who has made a profound positive impact during her time with us. Like a castle built upon a sandy beach, gone too soon. Like a perfect flower that's just beyond your reach, gone too soon. Born to amuse, to inspire, to delight, here one day, gone one night. Like a sunset, dying with the rising of the moon, gone too soon, gone too soon. May her precious soul rest in peace. Respected religious and political leaders, Amber's family, her relatives, friends, colleagues and everyone gathered there to share in the memory of her passing and our sadness and to celebrate the short and lovely life of Amber. Greetings from India. I am Dr. Kiran Kumar, former medical officer of health and the director of primary health care for the Cayman Islands. I met Amber for the first time when she joined as a summer intern in the public health department in 2014. In no time, she became integral part of public health family and won my heart. Amber had my admiration for her pleasant personality, professional behavior and self-confidence at such an age. She was punctual, respectful and dedicated. Amber had always completed tasks on time with a smile I cherish. Barry and Josie, just like you, I am proud of Amber. Amber was a lovely, promising young girl with a bright future. Although she had clear interest to become a doctor, she wanted to do MPH because of financial constraints. I encouraged her to do MBBS as government scholarships are available and suggested her to do MPH after medical degree to be future medical officer of health, proudly showing my chair to her, for which her response was a lovely smile. Just like you, I was delighted when she got admission to medical school and joyful to see her pictures of white gown, stethoscope, and recently graduation with colors. Only a few weeks ago, I was so happy to provide a reference for her temporary job at HSA prior to her proceeding to specialist training. Her last WhatsApp message to me was from HR in HSA signing that contract. We can plan many things, but God has secret plan for every one of us, which is He only knows. As per His plan, He sent her to you to have her lovely company for a few weeks before falling home. I still can't believe Amber is no more, and I do not want to believe it. Amber has gone home, but her image of lovely smile and glittering eyes will be with me forever. Barry and Josie, Amber's passing is indeed a great loss to her family and to K-Man. May God give you and your family strength to cope with her loss during this difficult time. Rest in peace, my dear Amber. Amen.
English German Student Council, on behalf of the University of Peach Medical School, Hungary, remembering Dr. Amber Martinez. On October 21st, 2022, 
Our most dear friend and colleague, Dr. Amber Martinez, unexpectedly passed away. On this day, it is almost impossible to commemorate in two words all those amazing attributes that shaped our precious Amber. Dr. Martinez was the most benevolent of souls in all her actions and beliefs. She treated every person she met with kindness, and she could always bring solace to those who came to her in their hard times. A champion of the students, she tirelessly worked to take on the problems of others and work through them as if they were her own. Alongside her perpetual passion, Amber was graced with an internal compass to continuously aim to do the right thing. Motivated by numerous goals, Amber exemplified her greatest attributes, her unwavering ambition. In her time at the University of Page, she accomplished so much. She was an international student ambassador for the University of Page for four years. In tandem, she was a member of the English German Student Council as vice president for two years and as treasurer in her final year. She was also the Vice President of the Erasmus Student Network at the University of Page in the 2020-2021 academic year. She was the proud owner of a blog, Amber's MD Journey, which detailed her experiences working and learning in the hospitals during her rotational year, as well as her final exam experiences and her plans for the future. During her time on EGSC, she pioneered a now cherished event at the University for World Mental Health Day called Tea and Talk, an event that encourages students to explore options to improve and maintain their mental health while going through the vicissitudes of student life. She also heavily pitched the Silent Room for the medical school, a community space where students can practice their religion in the privacy and tranquility of a quiet area. Amber was an all-rounder when it came to her student life. On top of her successes in medical school, she was a student researcher in the public health department of the university, and her stellar work landed her second place in the health sciences category of the TDK 2021 conference, and third place in the epidemiology, diagnostics, and prevention category of the Dean's Competition for Student Researcher Essays in 2021. All these achievements she accomplished while keeping up with her studies and lending herself to the betterment of her friends, her community, and the student body at large. She graduated in July of 2022 with a commendable cum laude degree and new goals and aspirations. At the time of her unfortunate demise, she had completed her registration with the General Medical Council of the UK and was licensed to practice. Amber was a daughter, a sister, and a friend. She was a true born leader and a tenacious advocate for change. One thing Amber was never afraid to do was to give her opinion, a quality so few possess and can execute with the finesse she was able to. The opinions, always constructive, were one of the many ways Amber showed love to those around her. Even so, she unconditionally offered her open arms to her friends when they needed her. Whether it was to just talk, cry, or yell in frustration, she was always there. Often she did so with a nice, warm, home-cooked meal to nurture those who she loved. Amber's absence would be heavily felt in the university and by those who she encountered. She dedicated her life to the service of other people, as seen both in her words and in her actions. She made the most of her time with us, and her legacy will live on. For death may come, but the one who remains in the hearts of the living never truly dies. Rest in peace, Dr. Amber Martinez. Tribute from UWC Cayman Islands. Ask anyone and they will likely give you very similar descriptions of Amber. Amber was absolutely authentic, which is one of the qualities most admirable about her and one of many qualities that made her stand out to UWC, United World College. 
Amber was selected to attend Pearson College UWC in Vancouver, BC in 2009 and became a part of the UWC Cayman Islands family. Of course, being Cayman, many of us knew Amber long before this in various capacities. Members of the selection committee noted that even at 15, her confidence and ambition exuded. She was incredibly involved and well-rounded and already knew she wanted to pursue medicine. The mission of UWC is to make education a force to unite people, nations, and cultures towards peace and a sustainable future. Amber was certainly a force to be reckoned with and embodied what it meant to be a UWCer. Her drive to make a difference and leave her mark on the world never wavered. At Pearson, she had roommates from Hong Kong, Canada, USA, Switzerland, and Libya across her two years and studied with peers from all over the world. She was, of course, proud to represent Cayman and took part in cultural days representing the Caribbean and Latin America. Like many of us, UWC fostered her appreciation of diversity. In her final thank you letter upon graduating from UWC in summer 2011, she shared about all of the fun and hard work of her final year and how she planned to go on to UM for pre-med and then do her medical qualifications to be a qualified doctor. Later on, at the University of Petch, despite being in a demanding medical doctorate program, Amber became an international student ambassador. Amber wrote, I know all too well how difficult it can be adjusting to a new culture, far away from home, where there are great differences. She was able to take her prior challenges of living away from home for the first time and use it to help others. The UWC Cayman Islands National Committee and our alumni community are grateful to have played a part in Amber's journey and to have supported her during her time at UWC and beyond so that she could then do the same for others. It was always a joy when Amber was home for our UWC socials. She was also so happy she could help out with our summer camp focused on sustainability in 2017 and of course had to organize jerk chicken for the camp attendees. Amber believed it only takes one person to make a difference, which she reiterated at many stages of her life. Amber never forgot where she came from, but always knew where she was going. Amber made a lasting impact on the world, and her journey had only just begun. She achieved so much and built many lasting connections. She always attributed much of her success to her parents and her family, and we pray for their peace and comfort at this time as they overcome this unfathomable loss. Know that you're always a member of our, a part of our UWC family. Many Many years ago now, I was privileged to perform a wedding ceremony for two friends of mine, Barry and Josie. Actually, Barry is a cousin of my wife. Josie became our close and dear friend over all these years. We, from that relationship and marriage came a lovely Cayman family. Two lovely baby girls and a baby boy. From their birth to their adulthood, they have been like my own. And they grew up to be very intelligent young people who tackled life to make their own mark. Barry and Josie were and are the exceptional parents who worked and planned and ensured that their children knew no lack 
of life's best had to offer them. Both were strong and still is strong parents, instilling in the three children all that the qualities parents are wanting and trying to ensure that their children, our children, would exhibit in their lives lifelong exceptional values. Amber was a special baby, and as she grew into adulthood, she just improved. Improved into the finest qualities, a strong young lady, knew what she wanted from childhood, and was not afraid to say so at times. I recall at our senior Christmas celebrations, she would come and assist us with preparing the school hall for the four or 500 elderly persons who would attend, making sure the hall was immaculately prepared for them, as she also assisted in serving their meals at times. She was special and had an excellent disposition and a personality to suit. As I said, we spent much time together as family because that's what they were to me, family. I remember their pool parties as children. We would be there sometimes. I recall one time they all was there for the pool. And just a little girl, she said to me, Big Mac, you're not coming in the pool? And I said, oh, no. And she turned around and said, big coward. <laughs> <laughs> like many of you, this is one of the saddest periods of my life. Each of us who are parents know just how much we want to see our child or children grow up and do well. We are never prepared for the losses. Sometimes we take the losses because we too know there are trials and errors in life. But in this, our grief, we know there is no recovery from this loss, and only the best of memories. The love of family and friends to share this grief and help us, not just in the immediate, but down through life. Carrie and I know this all too well, as we can never seem to get past the immediate. And Barry and Jose, their families, were there from the first moment till now. And so, yes, this is the saddest time, saddest period of life could be. And sometimes even question our faith. But as, as the, the song says, a wonderful savior is Jesus, my Lord. A wonderful savior to me. He hideth our souls in the cleft of the rock. And so we can stand there, we lose faith, but we do know Almighty God holds us up. And so I want to publicly 
express condolences to all the family. We've lost Ms. Clover. They still have Ms. Babs, Mr. Francis, and Mr. Toon. They still have family. On behalf of Karen, myself, and all our family, we express our condolences to all of them. This then is the life story. The life story of Dr. Amber Bianca Martinez, MD. 21st of April, 1993, 21st of October, 2022. This life story has been written, prepared in total by the family. Amber Bianca Martinez was born in Georgetown, Grand Cayman, on the 21st of April, 1993. The eldest child of three children, born to Barry Martinez and Joanna Welcome Martinez. She weighed just a mere four pounds, 15 ounces at birth. Her siblings include China and Ramon Sebastian, better known as Seb. From an early age, Amber was enthused and with learning, coloring, making puzzles, and phonetics were all part of her daily regime. At just one year old, at the age of three years and five months, Amber started kindergarten at Cayman Prep and High School on Smith Road. Her love for learning increased with Miss Donna, who was a young, patient, and amazing teacher. At the end of term one, Amber was starting to read and flourish as a kindergarten student. As Amber progressed through primary school, she made significant strides, always giving her all to her studies. Reading and music were her favorite pastime as she undertook both clarinet and piano lessons with Ms. Janine. And Amber graduated from primary school in June 2004 and collected various accolades at that time, including junior department spelling bee champion. Amber was a bright student and always strived to be the best in her class. High school was slated to start in September 2004. However, Hurricane Ivan came and caused much disruption. For the first term of year seven, there was a very short start to the school year, and as both parents worked in the utility industry, Amber and her siblings, China and Seb, went to New Jersey to stay with the Welcome family. Vince and his wife, Jennifer, or Jen, and her parents, the Harrigans, made sure Amber and her siblings were well attended to since Vince and Jen were new Levids. We always joked that they were in for more than they bargained for, as in a moment's notice, they had three children aged five to 11. This never bothered Vince and Jen for one minute, because Jen, being a school teacher, quickly controlled the situation and made sure that Amber, China, and Seb had an enjoyable time visiting the various landmarks in New Jersey, New York, and Connecticut. When school finally started back in mid-November 2004, Amber and her siblings returned to Cayman. Amber was ready for high school and focused on her studies in earnest. Throughout high school, she was a member of the Steel Pan, Pandemonium Band, came on prep and high school band in which she played the clarinet, was a member of both the senior and chamber choirs, was key club president for Cayman Prep and lieutenant governor of the Cayman Islands Key Clubs. 
It was during Amber's high school years that her love for medicine blossomed. She drew inspiration to study medicine from several situations she experienced in 2007. In one situation, she became acquainted with a five-year-old girl in need of open heart surgery. Fate would have it that shortly thereafter, she met an 11-year-old girl who had been diagnosed with a rare form of cancer. Having a love for helping people and being Lieutenant Governor of the Cayman Islands Key Clubs at the time, Amber had the support and the resources to fundraise to assist both children with the cost of medical treatments. Experiencing the appreciation from each child and their respective families for such a small act of kindness opened Amber's eyes to the medical field. This decision was further solidified by the hospitalization of Barry when he experienced a broken leg, one of his many football injuries. Even though Barry's injury was not severe in that situation, in future events, Barry had to seek medical attention overseas. Amber saw this as a void that needed filling, and at that time, and believed that by practicing medicine as a doctor in the Cayman Islands, she could make an invaluable contribution to her community and our local healthcare system. During Amber's time as Lieutenant Governor of the Cayman Islands Key Clubs, she was awarded both the James Gramps Harris Distinguished Lieutenant Governor Award 2009 and the Robert F. Lucas Outstanding Lieutenant Governor Award 2009 from the Florida District within which the Cayman Islands fell. Any and every opportunity Amber saw that could help develop and add to her knowledge, she latched on to it. These included taking part in the Cayman Islands Toastmasters Youth Program, the Kiwanis Key Leader Program, West Bay Girls Brigade, Cayman Islands Youth Assembly, the Chamber of Commerce Mentorship Program, and representing the Cayman Islands at People to People Future Leaders Summit on Medicine at John Hopkins University. During high school, Amber's community work was not limited to Key Club. She also volunteered at the Georgetown Public Library. Amber had a very positive attitude. On the rare occasion that Amber made a mistake or things did not turn out as she expected, her mantra was that, and I quote, defeat is often temporary. It is only giving up that makes it permanent, unquote. That was her way to move forward, learn from the situation, and start afresh. She applied this throughout her education years. In June 2009, Amber graduated year 11 from Cayman Prep and High School with 13 IGCSE GCSE passes. Amber was always determined to learn as much as possible and took on extra classes in order to undertake the additional subjects as the norm then was to take 11 or 8 to 11 IGCSE and GCSEs. Following high school graduation, Amber's next adventure was moving to Vancouver Island, Canada to embark on a two-year international baccalaureate IB program. This opportunity was made possible through the United World College, UWC, academic scholarship from the Cayman Islands National Committee. Under the guardianship of Dean Jeffrey Tinyabaugh, Amber attended UWC Lester B. Pearson College in Victoria, Canada. The UWC program further ingrained the need for service to the community, the need for social consciousness and selflessness. Tucked away in Pedder Bay on the unceded territory of the Shana, that is Beecher Bay First Nation, Amber described 
and I quote, being at Pearson College was like being in your own little world, unquote. With roughly 200 students from more than 100 countries, <coughs> Amber flourished in the close-knit community which was reminiscent of the Cayman Islands. During summer breaks, Amber also volunteered at various entities, including the public library and the emergency room of the HSA for six weeks. In summer 2010, where she discovered the realities of medical crises and helped further piqued her interest in the medical environment. Two years at Pearson quickly went by, but Amber had the opportunity to volunteer at local charities and events, experience many cultures, try new foods, be exposed to new languages, and make memories and friendships. In May 2011, Amber completed the IB program with biology, English, and chemistry at high level, and literature, math, and Spanish B at standard level. As Amber prepared for the next step in her journey, she prepared criteria that her university of choice had to meet. A university with a diverse community. At Pearson, Amber had become accustomed to living with people from all over the world and still wanted to have those experiences at university. Being from a small island, Amber knew a university in a big city wasn't the place for her and wanted a more familiar city. Lastly, Amber's new school had to be much closer to home. Having lived on Vancouver Island, which is on the west coast of North America, it was difficult to travel home frequently or as easily as she would have liked to somewhere close to Grand Cayman was a must. Amber ultimately settled on the University of Miami, UM, also known as the U for her undergraduate degree. It was just an hour's flight from Grand Cayman, being in Miami, Florida, so it was close to home. While the university was much larger than Pearson, it did have one thing in common, which was the diversity of students. And Miami, Florida was also a very familiar city as it was the destination choice for a quick trip whenever the family had a case of island fever. In 2011, Amber started her undergraduate degree and quickly became immense or immersed in university life. For fun, there were frat parties, tailgates, football games, and homecomings, the normal university stuff. And then there were the special visits of family or friends that Amber looked forward to seeing and catching up with. She knew she was always in for a treat, whether it was special pre-game access to a heat game with George Hydes and his family, Donna and George III, or just a day hanging out with Paul Manderson, Amber was always game. As a sophomore in college, Amber took a 10-day medical mission, mission trip to Nicaragua and Costa Rica through Vida Volunteer to provide medical care to individuals in areas with little to no access to health care. She also participated in White Coat Society shadowing at Jackson Memorial Hospital through the Minority Association of Pre-Health Students. This was quite an eye-opening experience as it allowed her first-hand knowledge of the healthcare system in the United States while shadowing physicians at Jackson Memorial Hospital. This included patient consultations on various awards. From her sophomore year until graduation, Amber was a teacher's assistant for mathematics. She found that this enhanced her organization and time management skills. For two years, between 2013 and 2015, Amber was a member of the Caribbean Students Association, where in 2014, 2015, she became the District 6 Director of the Florida Caribbean Students Association. Serving in that capacity, 
Amber learned that proper communication was key. And while the role was challenging, she found it very rewarding as she was able to unite Caribbean students within the Sunshine State. In her final year at UM, while on holidays back in Grand Cayman, Amber worked in the Public Health Department of the Health Services Authority. During this time, she assisted with the preparation of the National Health Program Manuals, the collection of weekly surveillance data, and, that, and the development of preparedness measures. These experiences gave her vital hands-on medical experience and allowed her to practice people skills that not only enhanced her personal but academic development. In 2015, Amber graduated with a Bachelor of Science degree in Health Science with a minor in Public Health from the University of Miami. Several months before graduating from UM, Amber applied to medical schools across Europe as she wanted a new adventure while she continued her journey to become a doctor. She was extremely excited when she got the acceptance letter from the University of Pex, the oldest university in Hungary. Amber's goal in life was to become a doctor. Her drive stemmed from a desire to help her fellow Caymanians and eliminate gaps in our healthcare system that she felt needed addressing. Gaps such as the need for young Caymanian doctors, doctors who understood our people and our culture, and to ensure that there was proper health care throughout all of our communities. Her dream was finally coming to fruition as she enrolled in medical school in September 2015. Similar to her deportment at the University of Miami, she quickly became engrossed in medical school at the University of Pax. This included learning the Hungarian language, which she indicated was the biggest challenge, but using Google Translate and having some Hungarian language classes helped. Basic medical Hungarian terms were necessary in order to obtain clinical experience. Making friends and forming lasting relationships came at naturally for Amber, so it is no surprise that she quickly made close friends who, in, who included Hastande Fashe, Rahila Marie Clessentine Yusuf, Timia Van de Kui, Elizabeth Wensgaste, Hazatyat Abri Well, sound like you good at repeating it too. <laughs> Mahmoud Obedat, Cam, and Yudo, Frieda Rex Sebastian. Amber also bonded with Nanetti, Moringa, and her family. Nani, being the loving and caring person she is, quickly became Amber's mom away from home. And Lottie and Marcel, her children, similarly became Amber's Hungarian siblings. September 2018 was a special and exciting time for Amber as she was now in her third year, and that was when the white coat ceremony took place. While not yet a doctor, the white coat ceremony was of significant importance as it is where students who have started their preclinical studies receive and put on the white coat, which is a symbol of the medical profession. Amber became a member of the English German Student Council, EGSC, which is the official representation of all international students at the University of Pax Medical School. Amber was also an international student ambassador in 2018-2019. In this role, she was able to represent both the Cayman Islands and the university. This allowed her the opportunity to share first-hand experiences with prospective students and newly accepted students on how to be prepared for university life in a new country. Amber shared Facebook posts, blog posts, and webinars on 
topics such as how to apply to medical school, how medical school students could upgrade their CV, and how prospective students could write a motivational letter. The biggest thrill of sharing the Cayman Islands with the Hungarian community and fellow students was by way of an international cookbook that was put out by the EGSC. Amber really wanted to do salt beef rundown, but as she was not able to source salt beef in Hungary, she chose to do curry chicken, rice and beans, and fried plantain. To bring the vision of the cookbook to life, EGSC arranged cooking sessions with renowned Hungarian chef Dr. D. Akos for each selected recipe. The cookbook was published in 2019 and is entitled 50 Delicacies on Earth. It is a significant expression of the university of the medical school, the diversity of the medical school, as it includes 50 recipes from four to five countries, including Amber's recipe of curry chicken, rice and beans, and fried plantains. Amber found that her time as a member with the EGSC was very similar to that of Key Club, as it allowed her to give back to the community, which was now her home. Besides supporting local Hungarian charities and various university programs, Amber was also able to have the EGSC agree to fundraise to support the fellow Caribbean islands of the Bahamas in 2019 when they experienced Hurricane Dorian. All donations received were presented to the Red Cross of the Bahamas. In deciding to become a student researcher along with her already heavy course load, Amber courageously decided to undertake to develop the topic of depression in medical students, medical professionals. This topic for her was the proverbial elephant in the room. As she saw that medical students and, stu and doctors were considered superhumans. From her research, there were multiple studies on the topic in the United States. However, there were very limited studies she could find that were conducted in Europe, not to mention less than a handful of such studies in Hungary. Amber considered the research necessary, as it was a subject area that she thought could help her fellow students and would help in the important work of the EGSC. Further to this research, Amber was able to place second place in the health sciences category of the TDK 2021 conference. TDK, in English, the Scientific Students Association Conference, is an annual contest organized by the Corvinus University of Budapest and is usually held during the spring semester with approximately 300 submissions. The TDK offers an open platform for the work of students seeking to gain academic knowledge beyond the regular curriculum. Supervisors facilitate the process of preparing the papers. Similarly to academic conferences, students present their papers in sections. Papers and presentations are evaluated by a professional jury based on certain norms and criteria that apply to general scientific publications. TDK aims to facilitate the author's professional and scholarly developments and for them to develop academic thinking and style of reasoning. For Amber, this was a huge accomplishment. Amber also submitted the same research for the Dean's competition for student research essays in 2021 and attained third place in the epidemiology, diagnostics, and prevention category. <clears throat> Additionally, Amber was also able to champion an annual event of tea and talk, which takes place on World Mental Health Day and the creation of the silent room, which is a place where university students 
can practice their religion in privacy. As Amber neared the, her rotational year, which was slated to start in July 2021, she was fortunate to apply for and obtain an Eremus and Student Mobility for traineeship, which allows students or recent graduates to obtain practical training in their chosen fields. The program is funded by the European Union as part of their contribution to support and promote education, training, youth, and sports in Europe. It provides medical students with the opportunity to gain hands-on experience in renowned hospitals across Europe while completing their rotations. As a result, Amber was able to obtain placement in the Catholic University of Leuven in Belgium for part of her rotations. Not only is it the highest ranked university in Belgium, consistently ranked among the top 10 European universities in terms of scholarly output, but it is also home to the well-renowned hospital, University Hospital of Leuven. Like the University of Pex, it is an old university and was founded in 1425. The University of Leuven had 10,000 employees and nearly 2,000 bids. Amber, considered that being an island girl, it was a once in a lifetime opportunity to gain hands-on experience at such a prestigious institution. This opportunity also allowed Amber to meet new people and experience yet another amazing culture. While all the doctors spoke English, and so did many of the patients, as Dutch was the first language in Leuven, Amber was able to pick up some of the language in her short four month stay. During this rotation, Amber was happy that she was able to scrub in and assist with numerous procedures in the operating room using various techniques and technology that were very new and breaking age. The highlight of her time there, however, was being able to assist with a double lung transplant surgery. Being a part of the team that helped give a patient a second chance at life is incredible as it gets." Unquote. Amber completed the remainder of her rotations at Mitterdee Hospital in Malta, University College London Hospital, and also at clinics hospitals in Pax, Hungary. On May the 25th, 2022, Amber sat and successfully passed the Hungarian written state exam and the patient physical examination and theoretical oral component on the 2nd of June, 2022. Amber graduated with the cum laude degree on the 2nd of July, 2022, and officially became Dr. Amber Bianca Martinez after being conferred the title by the Dean. Her goal of becoming a doctor had finally been achieved. In giving the English students graduation speech, Amber reflected on a quote by the world-renowned pediatric surgeon and prolific surgeon scientist Dr. Henry R. Ford. The quote was, character, patience, persistence, passion, honesty, and integrity. Never lose sight of these attributes. Amber, in true Kane style, had chosen none other than Dr. Ford, who happened to be the current dean and chief academic officer of the University of Miami Miller School of Medicine. Dr. Ford considered these values essential for great doctors, and Amber totally agreed. We must affirm our relevance and exert our influence by taking the lead on issues that affect the national healthcare agenda, fighting for health equity, and promoting a more diverse surgical work workforce, Dr. Ford said. 
It goes without saying that these attributes can be applied in each and every one of our daily lives and are not just applicable to doctors. Applying these tributes and taking personal responsibility for each of our own actions is key. Dr. Amber Bianca Martinez was registered with the <coughs> General <coughs> excuse me, Medical Council on the 24th of, 24th of August, 2022, which allowed her to now practice in the United Kingdom. The family of Dr. Amber Martinez were immensely proud of all her achievements, which were the result of much hard work, dedication, and perseverance. Such admiration was also shared by the community at large, so much so that she was part of an honorary ceremony put on by the office of MP, Mr. Isaac Rankin, on the 22nd of September this year. With plans on the way for China's wedding, Dr. Amber decided to take a break after graduation and wait until January 2023 to return to the United Kingdom to seek employment. She really wanted to take part in her sister's wedding and did not want to take the risk of not being able to get time off for the 29th of October wedding should she take a job right away. Dr. Amber therefore took a temporary post at the Public Health Department in Cayman to assist with a special project and in her free time was assisting China with the final wedding arrangements. The week that was supposed to be a beautiful week of happiness filled with wedding bliss as China was to be married quickly turned to sorrow as the untimely news of a possible accident was received. Dr. Amber Bianca Martinez, untimely passing on the 21st of October 2022, has left a hole in our souls that can never be filled. However, she will live on forever in our hearts. Dr. Martinez was preceded in death by her uncle, Delroy Welcome, and grandmother, Clover Martinez. Left to mourn her passing, her parents, Barry and Joanna Martinez, siblings, China and Darren, and Ramon Sebastian. Grandparents, Francis and Barbara Welcome, and Antonio Martinez, aunts, uncles, and their families, that is, Alden and Debbie Welcome, and their family, Marlene, Marlene and Mervyn Conley, and their family, Charlene Dawkins and family, Joseph and Sharon Welcome and family, Brenda and Curtis Bush and family, Bruce Martinez, Brian and Heather Martinez and family, Cousin Michelle and Shamari Scott and family, and a host of other relatives and numerous special friends, including Nanetta, Lottie, and Marcel Meringer from Hungary. A wonderful savior is Jesus, our Lord. A wonderful savior to me. He is the shelter in this time of storm. May her beautiful and precious soul rest in peace in that rock. A wonderful savior is Jesus, my Lord. Thank you, Dr. Bush. In life, in the midst of tragic loss and death and uncertainty, I've personally found comfort and hope in the word of God. When human words fail, 
and we cannot express the sentiments of pain and grief and sorrow that this life brings us, this life of sin brings us. The only source of comfort and strength and hope that I can find is in the word of God. And Martinez family, Welcome family, McLean's family, and all of the other, connect, other families connected, the close friends and families and relatives, the life that Dr. Amber Martinez lived, despite being so short, was a life full, fully lived. family one more time as I visited with them, visited with Sister Bob's, Sister Barbara Welcome, who is a member of my church right here in the East End Seventh-day Adventist Church, and Brother Francis, and Sister Josie, and Brother Barry, and the family. Something struck me the first time that I was able to visit with the family at their home. So Josie said, sometimes we don't understand why things happen, but God must have a bigger plan. In life, in this life, which is very short, we may never understand why God permits things to happen. But I can't wait till we all get to heaven, what do you say? And that's why we have to be faithful and say, Lord, you keep me. Hide me in the cleft of the rock. Hide me in you, Jesus, to help me. And in the midst of the pain and sorrow, help me to find and live with hope in our hearts so that one day very soon, it's not going to be long, very long again, one day very soon, we will see our loved ones again. I know you have been sitting for some time now, so I want to invite everybody to stand at this moment. You may not know the person who is next to you, but I just want you to stand and just squeeze the hand of the person next to you. And just stand with me. If you are able to, if you don't want family, you could stay seated if you so desire. And just squeeze the hand of the person next to you. It's a form of solidarity and unity and love just how God wants us to be united from every kindred, nation, tongue, and people. God wants to save us in his kingdom. This world is not our final home. This world of suffering and sin and pain and death and sorrows and crying and tears. This is not how God intended us to live lives as human beings. But thank God that even when sin entered into the midst of this world's experience, God had a plan through his son, Jesus Christ. And when we choose Jesus, grave and death doesn't have to have the final say in our lives. And once we have Jesus in our lives, I want you to squeeze the hand of your person and tell them the topic for the next few moments that we'll focus on. There still is hope. Say it a little stronger. There still is hope. With your hand squeezing the person next to you, just bow your heads with me as I pray. Father, take full control of your servant now. Bless the family. Thank you for your word, which brings comfort and strength and hope in the midst of pain and death. Touch the family one more time. Bless every person here and help us to look to Jesus, who is our source of hope. In Jesus' name, let everybody say. You may be seated. I promise you I will not do my full sermon. One good thing about being a short man, I know how to preach short as well. 
as we see if I could pull it up on the um, PowerPoint. If not, you could just flip through it for me. But family, we are not alone during the grieving process. You could just go to the next slide and yeah. Because the word of God says in Psalm chapter 46 verse 1, God, and you can repeat with me if you are able to see the screen, God is our what? Refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. We are not alone. Jesus has promised in the next slide. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5. Never will I do what? Leave you. Never will I forsake you. And the word of God says that he is the God of comfort. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 3 and 4. He says, blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. Of how much comfort? So it doesn't matter what you experience in this life. We serve a God who is able to comfort us. In all of our tribulations, we serve a God who is able to comfort us. And in the next slide, we can find that God sees when you're crying, Sister Josie and Brother Barry, and China and Sebastian, and family members. And we all have had some level of pain and experience of sadness and death in our life. And the word of God says in Psalm chapter 56, verse 8, you keep track of all my sorrows. You have collected all my tears in your bottle. You have recorded each one in your book. Thank God for Jesus. He's a man who is acquainted with sorrows and griefs. He understands what you are experiencing right now. He bottles your tears. That's why he is the God of comfort. And in the scripture reading, our grief is not ignored. Because the word of God says in Psalm 34 verse 18, the Lord is what? He's close. Close to the brokenhearted and save those who are crushed in spirit. And that's why he invites us to come to him with our sadness, with our pains, with our sorrows, with our problems and challenges that we face in life. He gives us a special invitation. The God of the universe, our creator, he gives us an invitation to come to him. Matthew 11 verse 28 says, read on with me, come to me all who are what? weary and heavy burdened and what will he do i will give you rest i will what a promise we have in jesus that's why i love him every day in the midst of my pains and sorrows i know that i can go to him and he will be there he says the word of god says that he is a friend that sticks closer than a brother and the one who will never leave us nor forsake us but how can we as human beings experience and endure so much pain? How can we experience so much pain and the experience of death that you're experiencing right now, Brother Barry and Sister Josie and family, is something that Job himself experienced. Job in one day, Lost his seven sons and three daughters. In one day he lost all of, his rich in it, all of his riches. In one day he lost all of his health. One day. But look at what Job said in Job chapter 1 verse 20. Then Job arose and tore his robe and shaved his head. And he fell to the ground and he worshipped. Did what? We can't even understand that. He worshipped. Next verse says, says in verse 21 and 22, it says, Naked came I from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return there. 
the Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And in all this, Job did not sin nor charge God with wrong. That's a key point. Because the devil will want us to blame God for this tragic accident. But I'm reminded that God is not the author of death. God is not the author of sin. It is Satan, the one who came to kill, steal, and destroy. But thank God that Jesus came to give life and give it more abundantly. But Job endured his pains and his mental anguish with patience, courage, and hope because his faith was strong in God. That's why he could say in Job chapter 19, 25, and 26, For I know that my Redeemer lives, and he shall stand at the last day on, last on earth. And after my skin is destroyed, this I know that in my flesh I shall see God. Job's life is an example of all who remain true to God despite all the sorrows and troubles and pains that we will suffer in this life. And with Job, he realized as he remained persevering and faithful to God in the midst of adversity and losing everything, he recognized that the best was still yet to come because of his faith in God. The end of Job's life became... Better than the beginning. Can't understand that. Look at what the Bible says in Job 42 verse 12 and 13. It says, now the blessed, now the Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning. For he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 female donkeys. And God also gave him again seven sons. And three daughters. The Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning. And with Christ, in this life we may not experience the best. But in the life to come, in the heaven made new and the earth made new, we know that the best is yet to come. The cross of Christ. Christ's agony on the cross covers the deep pains we suffer in this world. When Jesus cried out, do you remember what Jesus cried out on the cross of Calvary? When he was like dying on the cross for us, what did he say? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And in our life experience, in our sorrow, we sometimes will cry out to God, God, why, are, why is this happening to me at this point in my life? Why, have I, why does it seem like you have forsaken me? But Jesus was experiencing the second death of separation, which will happen when he comes again. He was dying the second death, which you and I are not supposed to experience. So he died so that we can have life, so, don't, so that we don't have to be eternally separated from our Heavenly Father. But he was experiencing on that cross, he was experiencing that eternal separation. And this deep cry of Jesus of separation of his Father becomes a balm to all who suffer, suffer the separation of death of loved ones. And Jesus suffers with us says he's a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. He surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we've esteemed him stricken and smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was what? Bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. We all need healing. Amen. It will not be an easy journey of healing for all those who experience death in this life. We may never fully heal until Jesus comes. But it is possible because of what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. That's why Jesus 
dying on the cross did something special. Second Timothy chapter one ten verse. Um, chapter 1 verse 10 tells us Jesus' death on the cross has abolished what? Has abolished what? Death and a, a broad life to, and immortality to light through the gospel. And that's why. For God so loved the world that he did what? Gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not what? Perish but have everlasting life. How many of you want to live forever? I want to live forever. I want to live forever. And we can experience that life by surrendering our lives to Jesus, the one who died for us. Amen? And, and, and through Jesus dying on the cross of Calvary, look at what he accomplished on the cross of Calvary. The next verse in 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, he says, He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. I don't want to be associated, associated with the devil. How about you? No, sir. But for this purpose, the Son of God was what? Manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. And also in Hebrews 2 verse 14 also uh, and shares again what these works of the devil is. In as much then as children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death. And that is who? The devil. That old rascal that brought sin and pain and suffering and death. Thank God that when Jesus said it is finished, he broke the power of the grave and sin and the devil in the name of Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. And that is why he won the victory and the power of Satan and his kingdom was broken. And all heaven rejoiced and Satan was defeated and knew that his kingdom was lost. And so that's why now, we can live with hope, a living hope, as we can find in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us to a what? A living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Praise the Lord. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that does not fade away. And where is it reserved? Reserved in heaven for you. That promise of eternal life is reserved in heaven for you. And can I tell you? Heaven is a real place. That's why Jesus said in John chapter 14 verse 1 to 3, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. But I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, what is going to do? I will come again to receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. That is God's ultimate desire. He doesn't want to live separated from us anymore. That's why he's coming back very soon. He wants to live with us forever. And that's why I has not seen, nor ear has heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those who love him. Heaven is a real place. Uh, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 13 says, Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. I cannot wait for that day when there will be no more COVID, praise the Lord, where there will be no more diabetes, there will be no more freak accidents, there will be no more pains and suffering and sorrow because the former things will be passed. Away. I cannot wait for that day, but while we wait, we have to hold on to the hope that we have in, it, have in Jesus Christ. And we know that powerful text, and we could skip down a few, where we can find in Revelation chapter 21, now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, verse, next verse is, and I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven uh, from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And verse 3 says, and I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. 
And this is the part I love. This is what I'm hopeful for. This is what I'm waiting for. And uh, we want you to live with that hope and an expectancy. That uh, next verse 4 and 5 says, And God will do what? Wipe away every tear from their eyes. And there shall be no more death. And I say, hallelujah. Because the worst experience that we experience as human beings in this life is death. But in the heaven and earth made new, no more death. Praise the Lord. No more sorrow. No more crying. There shall be no more pain. For the former things have passed away. And just to make certain that John knew what he was talking about, he said, he who sat on the throne, who is Jesus Christ, he said, right. I behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, right. For these words are what? True and faithful. You may not believe in God, but I want to encourage you to search your heart and to open up your eyes and say, Lord, if you are real, I need you to reveal yourself to me. Because this world is full of sorrow, full of pain, full of suffering, full of crying, full of tears. But if this is real, Lord, help me to make it into your heavenly kingdom. Thank God for the hope that we have in Jesus. That one day very soon, death itself is going to die. As we skip a few verses, I want to leave you with some hope in First. Corinthians chapter 15. Very good. This will be my last text before I read something and then I sit down. Behold, I want you to read with me. Behold, I tell you what? Mm, gonna reveal a mystery. Paul is talking to us, talking to us today. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all what? Sleep. He's talking about death. Death is as asleep. But we shall all be changed in a what? In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible. And we shall all be changed. And the next verse says, For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this morta mortal, mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death! is swallowed up in victory. Hallelujah. Death is swallowed up in victory. Next verse. And you're going to cry out, Oh death, where is your sting? Oh grave, oh Hades, where is your victory? The next verse says, The sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. And verse 57 gives us hope. And 58, but reading with me to get, but who? But what? Thanks be to God who gives us the victory to who? Lord. Our Lord Jesus Christ. This is why I love Jesus. This is why I surrender my life to him. Because he has gained the victory over the worst enemy in this life's experience. And that is death. And if he overcame, when we surrender our lives to him, we will overcome too. Thanks be to God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren... Be steadfast, immovable, uh, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. The legacy that Dr. Amber left will not be in vain. The lives that she's impacted a positive way we have to live faithfully for the Lord we have to go to Jesus every day take it one day at a time it's not going to be easy but we have to learn to live with hope in Christ Jesus that one day very soon those who are in the grave no matter how you went in this life God will bring us back when we are faithful to him and we have to live with that hope that Jesus who said, hey, I'm coming quickly. He's coming again. And he wants you to be in his kingdom. Life is too short. That's why we have to live every day as it is our last. 
but live with hope in Christ Jesus that in this life, no matter whether it's early or later, that we have to go through this experience of death. But we know that the grave does not have to have the final say in our lives. Because with Jesus, he is the resurrection and the life. Thank God for the hope that we have in Jesus. And that he is coming back again very soon. I cannot wait to walk on streets of gold. I can't wait to eat from the tree of life, which gives 12 different manna of fruits every month, a different fruit. I don't know how the mango is going to be up there, but if it's anything like Nam Dok, I can't wait. If it's anything like Julie Mango, I can't wait. Heaven is a real place, and we cannot do, I can't wait for it. But we just have to hold on to the hope that is in Christ Jesus and learn to live for him every single day. I found a beautiful poem. Beautiful, beautiful poem that I want to leave with you all. It was written by Linda Ellis, entitled, The Dash. The Dash. She says, I read of a man who stood to speak at a funeral of a friend. He referred to the dates on the tombstone from the beginning to the end. He noted that first came the date of birth and spoke of the following date with tears. But he said what mattered most of all was the dash between those years. For that dash represents all the time they spent alive on earth. And now only those who have loved them know what that little line is worth. For it matters not how much we own, the cars, the house, the cash. But what matters is how we live and love and how we spend our dash. So think about this long and hard. Are there things you'd like to change? For you never know how much time is left that still can be rearranged. To be less quick to anger and show appreciation more and love the people in our lives like we have never loved before. If we treat each other with respect and more often wear a smile, remembering that this special dash might only last a little while. So when your eulogy is being read with your life's actions to rehash, would you be proud of the things they say about you, of how you lived your dash? How are you living your dash? And I want to suggest to each one here, the way that we could fully live our dash out is by having Jesus in our lives. We choose Jesus, even when the dash runs out, we know we have everlasting life. I pray that God will bless the family and each and every one of us here. May we reflect and give God thanks for the life and legacy of the life of Dr. Amber. That we will choose Jesus so that even when our rush, dash runs out, we know that eternal life is guaranteed in Jesus Christ our Lord. The one who is the resurrection and the life. May God bless each and every one of us as we continue to lift the family up in prayer. May God strengthen us and comfort us. In Jesus' name. Reverently bow our heads in prayer. Almighty God and our loving Father who art in heaven, it is in the spirit of celebration and thanksgiving that we bow before you now. We bow, O oh God, in a time of loss and sorrow. Yet, Lord, we stand before you, we sit before you, our heads bowed before you, the awesome God. 
with thanksgiving for the blessing of the life of Dr. Amber Martinez. No doubt in the quietude of this moment, there are questions that linger in our minds for which there is no clear-cut answer. But God, we stand knowing that we don't have all of the answers. We are not privy to the reasons. But God, we know thou knowest. We would ask now for the comforting presence of your Holy Spirit. We pray, Spirit of the living God, that you will draw close to the members of the family. Thou who art the chief consoler, those, though you who are the master comforter, I pray that you'll draw divinely close, reach across every shoulder. May they feel the divine touch. Draw them in your sweet and loving embrace. Now, dear Lord, I beseech you, may they find there in your loving arms a place of quiet rest near to the heart of God. We give you thanks, God, for a life that was brief, but what a life of blessing. We give you thanks for a life that was short, but it was a life that was marked by success and accomplishment. We give you thanks, God, for all of the blessings that you afforded her. We give you thanks for the impact that she made upon the lives of so many, both here within the borders of these Cayman Islands and abroad. Almighty God, we give you thanks for an intellect that was brilliant, a mind that was keen and sharp. We give you thanks, Almighty God, for a wonderful family from which she came. And I pray that the memory of this wonderful and dear young lady will linger long in the hearts of the members of the family and all of us indeed. We're grateful, Lord, for the inspiration that she gives to those who are left behind. For the reminder that the path to, the, to success is available. May we be willing to take the road of work and sacrifice and effort in order to succeed. Oh, divine God, we're glad to know that when Jesus is with us, that he will bring us to success. But before we leave the confines of this church this morning, remind us all clearly that our greatest success comes only as we know Christ. As we have that very vital and important and all significant relationship with him, we believe, Lord, that one day soon and very soon the prophecies of Scripture, the promises of your word will come to pass. The heavens will roll together as a scroll. The one who declared in the long ago, I am the resurrection and I am the life, will come back in power and great glory. And according to the word of God revealed in Scripture, according to the promise contained in your word, the sound of the trump will be heard. The dead in Christ will rise. Oh, we await most expectantly, oh God, for the coming of that day. We are praying most earnestly this morning or this afternoon in the words of John, the last of the apostle. Even so come, Lord Jesus, quickly come. And so cheer the hearts of these, the members of the family, and all who are here gathered, our hearts and souls burdened by the loss, this great loss, and may we all be reminded that a better, brighter day is soon to dawn. Amen. Soon Jesus will come. Thank you for this wonderful hope that burns within our hearts. Hope in the coming of the Lord. This is our prayer. And I would ask, dear God, that if there's anything that we should have asked that is needful for this family and all whose hearts are burdened by this loss, Oh, grant it unto us as you see fit. For we pray and we ask this in the name of the one 
in whom is contained all our hope for the future and our hope for the present. Amen.
loving embrace and keep the family close more than ever. Bless each and every one of us. And Lord, help us to live with that hope in Christ Jesus. Bless us today. And help us to make a difference with our dash as we put you first in everything that we do. Bless us, oh God. Come soon, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. We want to thank you for being here this morning to show your love and support. We want you to continue to visit the family as you pray and check up on them as we continue to support them in these very difficult moments. The platform participants will exit first, followed by the, the pallbearers, then the family members. Let us continue to live with hope in our hearts. Hope in Christ Jesus. May God bless each and every one of you. Thank you.
it's raining.